everybody, it's Karen here from tuppenscolor.co.uk. Thank you very, very much for joining me today. Uh, this is what I've been making today. I have been using up my retiring DSP and I have made this a very big bag and it is big. It's uh, eight inches uh, wide, eight inches tall and it is four inches deep. So you can get uh, quite a few goodies in there. Stay with me, show you how I made it. This gift bag is going to be pretty big so to make it i am going to need two full sheets of uh, uh, 12 by 12 paper and this is fresh florals and it's in the rich raspberry uh, uh, rich raspberry color uh, and i've got um, a length of the finely woven ribbon in rich raspberry and i would say that that is probably about two foot long something like that uh, I'm making myself a couple of joining strips and these are just a bit of whisper white, uh, one inch wide and I've scored and folded them uh, at half an inch and what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to put tear and tape on them and they're going to join my pieces of DSP together and I've cut two more squares of, um, of whisper white um, these are four inches by about two inches um, and these are going to be uh, reinforcing pieces for my handles so um, they don't necessarily need to be whisper white because um, uh, they're not going to be seen and I have one more piece of card which is optional uh, if you're going to put something heavy into your gift bag, you might want to reinforce the bottom. So uh, I've cut a piece of rich raspberry, which is just under eight inches by just under four inches. All right. And that is going to sit into the bottom of my bag to give it a little bit of extra strength. I'm going to score my paper um, and I'm working on what is going to be the inside of my bag because I think it's going to be a bit easier for you to see this pattern. Before I start scoring, um, I just want to make sure that if this pattern is directional, um, that I, I've got things going the right way. So if I've, got, if I've got a pattern with little ducks on it, for example, I want to make sure that my ducks are going to be swimming in the right direction, not on their heads or from side to side. Uh, it doesn't matter particularly with this pattern because it's not uh, uh, not directional it doesn't have a clear up and down or side to side if I put it that way uh, there isn't a great deal of difference in it um, other than the than the artistic shading um, I also want to be mindful of what's happening on the other side now if this was going to be the outside of my bag uh, I'm going to do a piece at the top that folds over and I would want to make sure that again if I had a pattern that had a direction there that it wasn't going the wrong way because um, it'll be That'll be bottom to top on this side, but when you turn it over, that is going to be upside down. I hope I'm making sense. Uh, right, so I'm going to do some um, some folding. So I'm going to start with what is going to be the top edge of my, my bag. So my bag, this is going to be the bottom of my bag. This is going to be the top of my bag. And I'm going to score using the thicker end of my stylus at four inches and I'm going to mark it at eight inches okay I'm just going to make a little uh, just a little notch there that could be a pencil mark and I'm also going to make a mark at two inches but it's, it's not going to go all the way to the bottom so I'm going to use a ruler to help me and I'm going to come in two and a half inches because that's going to be the depth of my base and then a further two inches from that so that's eight and a half inches seven and a half inches I'm going to put a ruler there well it doesn't have to be a 12 inch ruler it just needs to be uh, something that will stop you scoring because <laughs> I'm going to score at two inches and I'm going to go down as far as that ruler all right so that's my up and down bit. So now I'm going to do my side to side bit, if that makes sense. So this is going to be the bottom of my bag. So I'm going to score at two and a half inches. And this edge is going to be the top of my bag. So I'm going to turn that round and score at one and a half inches. I'm going to put away my board, but I'm going to keep my stylus in my hand and I've got a squishy mat ready. Right, so it's going to be easier for you to see this 
if I make some um, some marks on here. Okay, so here is my score line that I made that doesn't go all the way down to the bottom. So I'm going to put a mark. Sorry about the wobbly uh, wobbly tripod. I'm going to put a mark where that ends. It's on the inside, so it's not going to be seen. And I'm going to mark off this corner here. Now, if I wasn't filming this, I probably wouldn't do that because I can I can see where those marks are. But uh, for your benefit, I'll. I'll mark them so that uh, you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to take my ruler again, got my squishy mat underneath, and with my stylus, I'm going to put one point in the corner and mark a line up my ruler at the point where I've made the mark, and I'm going to just join those together with a score line. And then I'm going to go from this corner again to the mark that I've made making sure that everything is lined up and I'm gonna go there with my ruler and now I can put away my stylus and bring in my bone folder and I'm gonna do a bit of burnishing and it's helpful to do this at this stage rather than later because right now you're just dealing with one piece of paper rather than a whole bag. Okay, so we're going to make the folds and we're going to maybe unfold them again later, but for now we're just going to put them in place. Okay, now this is the one that doesn't go all the way down, so I'm going to burnish as far as that mark, and now I'm going to bring in my diagonals. I'm going to make sure they are nice, crisp diagonals. And taking a little bit of time at this stage does mean that you'll get a better result later on. And sometimes you feel like you're, you know, your paper wrangling, which is what I'm doing at the moment. But uh, there we go. Check that that folds up nicely. That everything is nice and sharp. And there we go. I think it's a good idea to do uh, as much as you can to your project before you start putting it together. While it's still a flat piece of paper, it's much easier to deal with than when it becomes um, a, a 3D thing. So with that in mind, I'm going to punch the, uh, the holes for my ribbon handles now. And to help me, I have created a little template. So this is just a little bit of scrap card, which is about five inches by about two and a half, I think. And what I've done is I've measured one inch down from one side and scored it. And uh, I've found the halfway point, which is two and a half inches and then one and a half inches out from that center point I've scored um, uh, uh, I've scored downwards and I've just punched two little holes where those lines intersected all right and I'm going to keep this and this is going to be my bag hole making template now if you remember when I made this uh, when I was scoring this I made a, a, a little score line at the eight inch point okay and there it is don't know whether you can see it and that is going to help me to make my holes so i'm going to bring in my my uh, hole making template and i'm going to align that halfway mark with the mark i made there okay As you can see, there's my measurements on the back. And I'm going to get a pen. And I'm going to mark where I want my holes to be. And now I can fold that over. And this is going to be inside out, all right? And hang on, I've only got one hole. Oh, there it is. There's the other one. <laughs> Forgot I turned it over. Bring in my hole punch. And line that up and 
there's my hole. And there's my other one. Okay, and I'll flip that back because it's going to be that way. And there are the holes already. So I'm going to go and do the same to the other piece. So now I'm ready to do a. Um, so now I'm ready to do some trimming. So this is the bottom edge of my bag. And I'm going to fold it over on the, uh, the, the score line, which I have carefully burnished, and snip away a little, little skinny triangle. And I'm going to do the same at either side, just to give my my bag a bit more room for the flaps to sit nicely into place. Just going to do one more thing before I start putting it all together um, and that is to reinforce the um, the punched holes. Um, again, if you're putting something light in your bag you don't necessarily need to do this um, but this will will make things a little bit stronger if you're going to be putting anything with any sort of weight to it. So I've got my uh, my little strip of Whisper White and I've checked that it isn't going to be too big to go uh, behind my my top flap and I did trim it down a bit because the, the pieces that I cut were too big and I'm just going to put a little bit of adhesive just at the top and the bottom. I'm trying to stay away from where those holes are likely to be and I'm just going to stick that onto my paper behind my two punched holes, bring my punch back in and I can see where that white paper is. So I can just line my punch up and punch that out. And there again. And that will add uh, quite a bit of strength to the carrying handles on this bag. Now I'm ready to put it all together. Uh, and to do that, I have my construction strip, which is a one inch wide piece of Whisper White. And I've got tear and tape on either side of the fold, which is made at half an inch. And I've already got this piece ready, so I'm just going to um, apply the construction strip to uh, to this piece. And um, at this point, you want to make sure <laughs> that you didn't um, get your paper turned around at some point when you were making it, because somehow or other I managed to do that, and I wound up with um, I wound up trying to put two pieces together that were like that and it didn't work very well at all. So uh, just be careful, okay? I don't know how I managed to do that, but at some point I got my tops and my bottoms confused, which is never good. And uh, with, as they say, disastrous results. So I'm just going to put this up against that edge there. And I'm trying to keep this as straight as I can, just within, or just on that cut edge there. Okay. And now that I've done that, I can bring in my other piece. And bring those two pieces in together so that the folds are matching and everything's matching. Uh, yes, fortunately I had a, another piece of this paper um, because I would <laughs> I would have um, basically ruined an entire video. But it would have been funny for you. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, uh, I'm not sure whether or not I kept the bit where I joined the two pieces together because uh, I work in I work in kind of stages and if something happens that it completely ruins a take I don't keep it I just I just delete it um, but if it's there I'll uh, I'll pop it on as a blooper for you okay but if not you will just have to imagine my reaction. <laughs> 
I didn't swear. I'm very proud of myself. I didn't swear. Okay, so this is how my bag is going to go together. And I need my tear and tape again. Let's put that a bit flatter so that you can, can see it a bit better. So just within the kind of the half inch area there. And I, this time, um, I think I'll put some tape on these flaps as well. I don't normally, but this is a big, big bag. And this side. And uh, what I found with the prototypes was that these flaps tended to, to flap up when I didn't want them to. Okay, and I've put the tape on the wrong side. Oh, I'm not having a good day. Okay, right, if this happens to you, this is what you need. Lighter fluid, Ronsonol. Um, I think in America they sell something called Undo. It's the same thing, it's naphtha. And as if by magic, that tears away. And one on this side too. And it doesn't stain the paper, doesn't damage the paper. And it is as cheap as chips. I got that in the pound shop. Okay, but anyway, with tobacconists, places like that, we'll carry that for you. Okay, so I'm not going to push my luck with that. Okay, <laughs> you can do that if you want to. So I'm just going to fold in my flaps, fold in my top flap. Take away the backing off my tear and tear. I'm not having a good morning this morning. It's all going a bit pitong on me. It's all going wrong. Yes. Put that over. Come on, darling. There we go, make sure that's square. Get me hand in there. Okay. And now this is my piece of uh, card which I cut earlier on just to fit inside there and that will help keep uh, the base of my box from collapsing falling and uh, everything falling out of it. Before I move on to putting the uh, the handles onto the bag uh, I just want to point out this uh, free edge here which is kind of flapping away. Um, if that bothers you just cut yourself a little piece of um, either matching paper or um, a bit of toning card. You could use some um, a little bit of rich raspberry there. And I'm just going to put a little bit of liquid adhesive in there. Tape would work just as well. Of course it would. And I'm just going to slide that into place and just squash those edges down. Okay. And that will just... Uh, give it a little bit of a finish both sides. Oh, the other thing you could do if you wanted them to match, you could just snip up that little piece there. Entirely up to you, or you could just leave it as it is. I'm just going to put the top back on my adhesive so it doesn't dry out. So finally, um, I've already put the handle in on this side. I have a length of uh, the finely woven ribbon. I'm really going to miss this stuff. Um, and that is about 18 inches long piece I cut originally. I had one piece and it uh, would, wouldn't make two handles. So I cut myself another piece. And I'm just going to thread that through the holes in the top of the bag. Bring it round. And I'm just going to tie an ordinary square knot. Or a reef knot, as it is sometimes known. Okay, make sure you don't do a granny. Pull those tight, and there I have finally my completed bag. And there is the finished uh, bag in rich raspberry, and uh, this is one that I made in lemon lime twist, same dimensions. And uh, I also had a play around with uh, making the bag in a different size, and I made this one to be six inches by six inches by six inches so that would hold you know quite a bit of kit in there right and uh, this time of year I am using up my retiring DSP so a uh, nice thing about these bags as well is that I can make them I can fold them flat I can put them in a drawer and when I'm uh, when I'm ready to put a gift in them 
all I need to do is put a little bit of a gift tag, maybe a bit of tissue paper on the inside, pop my Prezi inside, and uh, there you go, Bob's your uncle. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for joining me. Would love it if you came back and saw me again sometime soon. But for now, once again, thank you very much for joining me, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.